What's up guys, how you doing? I hope you guys are well. Welcome to another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about two bits. First of all, we're gonna be talking about the upcoming Q&A that we're gonna be doing on this channel. We're also talking about focus tips for sports photography. Looking forward to it, it's gonna be a good video, let's go. So guys, before we get into the content of today's video, I'm gonna ask you to do all of your usual YouTube magic. Please don't forget to go and hit the like button on the video. It'll take you two seconds of your time. It's the biggest thing you can do to say thank you for me making another awesome video. So please take one second to go do that right now. It's just there. Hit the thumbs up on the video. It helps me out loads on my channel. Thank you very much. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Loads of other videos on my channel and loads of other videos still to come. But today we're talking about sports photography focus tips. Before we talk about that, I just want to touch on my upcoming Q&A. Now, I said to you guys I was going to do a live Q&A on my channel, which I'm absolutely going to do. But we've got a slight dilemma. Uh, Mrs. Sambles is due to give birth. Well, the due date is in like 10 days from now. Uh, but of course, it could be any time. And I was thinking about this and I'm worried if I set up a live Q&A and I tell you guys where it is, guaranteed Mrs. Sambles will go into labour and then I won't be there for the live Q&A and that messes up the whole thing for all of you guys and I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm going to do a Q&A video. What you guys need to do, you need to go follow my Instagram page at Rob Sambles Sport. I'm putting it on the screen right here so you know exactly where to go. Go check out that Instagram page. As this video gets released, I'm going to be putting on there on the Instagram stories a thing for the Q&A where you can ask your questions. I'll do that over the course of a few days. So you've got loads of chance to ask questions. I'm going to put something on my Twitter as well. My Twitter is at Rob Samble's photo. I'll put that on the screen right here too. Put your questions into there and then I can film the video answering the questions. And whilst it's a shame it's not a live Q&A, at least it means we get the Q&A without a risk of me not being there because I'm off in the hospital with Mrs. Samuels giving birth. Don't want to miss the Q&A, right? But I've kind of got to go to that. She'll get pretty mad if I don't turn up for that. So I've got to be there, right? But don't worry, there will be a live Q&A on this channel real soon into the new year. Perhaps we do it like a, a Happy New Year live Q&A, something like that. So don't worry, that's still going to happen. Anyway, enough chat of the Q&A. You know what to do. Go do it. Let's talk about focus settings for sports photography. Now, first thing to say, when I reference different settings and stuff like that, I am going to be talking about Canon, specifically my Canon 1DX. This will be what I'm referring to in terms of the settings. So, of course, those of you guys using other Canon cameras uh, or perhaps using, you know, Nikon, Sony, whatever else you might be using, there will be some differences, but a lot of the principles I'm going to talk about will be exactly the same. So don't worry too much about that. The first thing I want to talk about is which type of focusing I use. Specifically, I will use Alservo focus mode for the Canon. Um, Alservo is like a continuous focus mode. Um, I don't know exactly what it's called actually in Nikon or, or Sony or any of those, but they will have a very similar mode. So if you've got your manuals, go look up continuous focus and you'll find the one I'm talking about. The reason I use that is because it allows me to, to move with an object that I want to focus on and I can just hold down the focus button and it will continue to track, right? So if I start to focus on a player, a football player, let's say, soccer player, and they're moving, as I move with them, if I just hold the focus button, it will continue to focus as they move. And that's why I use Al Servo mode. Now, I combine that with back button focus, as a lot of you guys know. If you don't know about back button, back button focus, I've done a video all about it. Go check that out. I'm going to link that at the end of this video. Watch this one first, then go watch that one, because I talk all about the benefits of using back button focus. I love it. Best thing in the world, especially combined with Al Servo. If anyone says to me, you know, um, what's the best way to get good focus? I would say combine back button focus with Al Servo mode. Best two tips that will step you forwards more than anything else. Probably more than anything else that I'm about to say. But that's the great starting point, okay? Al Servo continuous focus mode. That is the first thing that you guys need to be doing. So secondly, we're going to look at focus points. Now, with the, um, the Canon... 
you can do a, a variety of different um, sort of types of focus. Now, I will always use single uh, focus point, center single focus point. Now, I'm going to try and show you right here. Um, I think you guys hopefully will be able to see this on the screens. You can see that little blue dot. Oh, I just disappeared. Hang on. That little blue dot in the middle, you see I'm literally just using the tiny single focus point. The reason I do that is it allows me to be a lot more precise with my focus. Now, you can do different methods of focus points, right? You can have just like the whole screen which tries to focus on all different things in, in the viewfinder. You can have like an expanded center point, like a cross focus one, or you can set it to just a single focus point in the center. That's what I always go for. The reason I do that is because it allows me to be a lot more precise precise with my focus. Of course, you can reframe. Um, you know, a lot of cameras like the 1DX has something like 64 points. So you don't have to have it as the center one. Um, you know, maybe if you're doing a football game and you're you're looking down the left flank, um, you know, you might want to set it slightly off to the side so you get more, you know, pitch or something in the pitch. You do whatever you want. Honestly, I don't tend to. I'm pretty much always single point focus in the center point. It allows me to be a bit more precise. So I would suggest that's the way to go. Some people have different opinions on this one. But for me, single point focus, center, always the way to go for the best focus. Now, something which I get asked a lot about. Now, this one is a bit more specific to Canon, although I know Nikon do like a similar thing and Sony as well. But in the Canon cameras, specifically the 1DX, uh, the 7D2 does it as well. You have a choice of different case options within the menu. Now, what I mean, if you guys go into the menus on your Canon, you have this menu, right? It looks like this, where you've got the different cases that you can set up. Uh, now, I get asked all the time on this, which case do you use? Which one is best? The disappointing answer I think that most people always get from me is that I pretty much just stick with case one. Case one is described as a versatile, multi-purpose setting. I find it works fine, so I tend to use that. But I'm going to touch on a couple of the other ones, which can be useful as well. Um, but maybe just worth knowing that personally, I tend to always stick to case one. Case two. The idea of case two is that it tracks objects and will ignore obstacles. So, for example, if you're combining Al Servo mode with single point focus, let's say, you could hold on to a player, get the focus on that player, track them, and let's say they pass behind another player, your focus isn't going to jump straight away to that new player. It's going to maintain the focus of that other guy as he comes out the other side. That's what case two is about. Now, Case one would, would do that as well. Sometimes it will try to jump a little bit to the other player, but it's pretty, pretty good, which is why I don't tend to go specifically with, with that one. Um, the downside is that because of that, it is a little bit slower to grab focus when you want to focus on someone new. Which leads us on to case three. Case three is kind of slightly the other way. Case three is designed to instantly focus on subjects entering your autofocus point. So using the same example, if you're tracking a player and they pass behind another player, it's going to instantly refocus to that new player or the new object, whatever it might be, that has entered your autofocus point that you've set. Great if you want quick focus, if you're jumping around all the time focusing on new things, case three could be for you. I want somewhere in between, again, which is why I'm personally on case one. Case four. Now, case four actually can be quite a decent one. I've used this myself for football before. Those of you guys familiar with the menu will know that the little symbol actually is like a little football player, a little soccer player. Um, so that kind of makes people think, well, that must be the good one, right? Which, which actually is pretty good. This one um, is described as for subjects that accelerate or decelerate quickly, um, which definitely would describe most sports. And actually, I've used coast, co uh, case four quite a bit for basketball and football soccer found it worked really well so case four could be a good one to try but again personally guys I, I do stick to case one case five is described as for erratic subjects moving in any direction I'll be honest I've had very little experience using case five um, and case six is described as subjects that change speed or move erratically kind of sounds similar to case five 
right? But my biggest advice with that one would be go and have a play around. Change them a lot. You probably won't find much difference between them, um, which again probably is why I kind of, after playing with all of them, I was on case four for a little while and then I kind of moved back to case one and I've pretty much stayed with that. But go have a play. See what you think. I'm quite interested on this one, guys. Comment below. Let me know what you use. If you guys are using a 1DX or a 72, Comment below. Let me know what do you use um, in the cases because I think there'll be people with different opinions and I'll be really interested to hear, especially if there is someone out there saying, Rob, like you're crazy. Don't use case one. Use this one instead because of this reason. Let me know because I'll be really interested to hear. Comment below and let me know right now. Anyway, that's enough talk about cases. Lastly, but certainly not least, I want to talk about where do I focus? So if I'm focusing on a, on a player or, or a soccer player, football player, basketball player, where do I focus? Now, it, this will depend slightly. If I get an opportunity to, like if I'm doing something more um, close up, like if I'm photographing a basketball timeout, for example, and I want to get the expression of the coach or the players, I will focus on the face because the face is where the expression is going to be and I want that to be the most in focus aspect to that photo. It's not always easy if you're trying to focus on, on someone in action playing a sport to focus on their face though. So when I'm photographing actual moving sports, basketball, football, soccer, doesn't really matter. I will pretty much always aim for the chest. Several reasons. First of all, the chest is pretty consistent, right? Basketball players, football players, soccer players, they're moving around the place. Their arms are moving, their legs are moving, but their chest is pretty central. So wherever their body goes, their chest is kind of central to where they're moving. Sometimes hands are flailing out here or legs are flying up over here. The chest is pretty central, so I tend to aim for the chest. The other reason being most sports with a, with a kit, there's often a lot going on on the chest. There's numbers, there's logos, there's sponsors, there's all sorts. And so it tends to give you um, a fair bit of different contrasting things um, to try to focus on. As opposed to like just a plain black surface, um, something with a contrast, like a dark color and then a light number. It gives you contrast, something to focus on, um, which enables the camera's autofocus to just operate that little bit more efficiently. Don't get me wrong. You could try and focus on a plain black surface and, and it would still do a pretty good job but the contrast helps that's why I tend to aim for chest when I'm focusing in an actual sports action again if it's like a timeout or chatting or a celebration I might aim for the face and that's pretty much the summary guys so to recap my main points for good focus for sports photography Al Servo continuous focus mode Back button focus, go check out my other video linked at the end of this one. Case one for me personally, single center point focus and I'm aiming at the chest. You follow those, you won't go far wrong. Sometimes you hit and miss, right? I still get photos where I think I've nailed it and then I look at it and it's totally out of focus and I'm thinking like, what did I do? Sometimes it happens, you just get a little bit unlucky. Keep going, keep practicing and you will get some perfect bang in sharp photos guys thank you very much for watching the video don't forget to go check out my at rob sample sports page go over there add your questions for the q a those of you guys who replied from a last q a and i didn't include your questions in the video don't worry i've still got those down and they will be the first questions up in this q a so don't worry about that if you missed out the last time add some more i want to get as many questions in as i possibly can that video will be out in probably just a few days. I want to give you guys a few days to ask you questions. And then I'm going to make that video and we're going to stick it out. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Get out there. Go shoot some sports. Get your focus nailed on just right. And I will see you guys real soon on the next video. Thanks for watching.